Well, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of Doctor Who. From collecting all of the sonic screwdrivers and sonic lipstick, having a huge playing card of the Ten of Hearts that has David Tennant and Donna Noble on the other side, a Gallifreyan plaque that translates to Is Magic Real? The last episode of my series Is Magic Real is on Sunday by the way, so if you haven't already, watch the whole series. And even performing for the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday themselves multiple times. Mate, even the intro to my history of videos are inspired by Doctor Who. And let's not talk about my choice of spectacle wear. <coughs> so when I found out that Neil Patrick Harris, ex-president of the Magic Castle, great illusionist and someone I bumped into once at Phantom Peak, was playing the Celestial Toymaker in my favourite show of all time, of course, I was over the moon, or many moons of Gallifrey. But enough about me and my love for Doctor Who, this is a magic channel and you read the title. So with that in mind, if you happen to come across the Celestial Toy Maker and he challenges you to a game of cards, this is how you win. So for those wondering, yes, these are the exact cards that were used for the 60th anniversary special of Doctor Who, Mr. Emporium's playing cards. They even feature Neil Patrick Harris's face on the King of Hearts as well. And if you want to collect them, um, I'll leave the link down below. Um, it's from Little Shop Prop. So yeah, go check it out if you want to get them yourself. But this is a, uh, a magic tutorial and uh, not a Doctor Who playing card video. So you want to be the Celestial toy maker himself by, you know, playing the simplest game of all, which I'd written on one of the ad cards. The simplest game of all, the rules of the game, highest card wins, ace is higher. You win or you lose, that's it. The best of three rules are inviolable. Boom, simple as that. Um, simplest game of all. So, uh Let's go for the obvious card, my favourite, the Ace of Spades. And all you have to do is lift up the card like this and you are straight to the Ace of Spades. And you've won. Um, it's as simple as that. But I'm going to teach you how to do that. In three, two, one. Do some, you know, cool animation chase. So how you do it is real simple. It's more simple than this game, the simplest game of all. All you have to do is do a crimp. If you don't know what a crimp is, um, it's basically just sort of folding the card without making it obvious. Um, for this, what I usually do and what I usually do for a lot of my crimps is I run my thumb and my index finger to either corner from the center to either corner like that. And it's basically, you will see, you might be able to see like a slight U shape, slight bend here, but to the audience, that doesn't mean a lot. But when you put it in the middle of the deck like this, again, you might be able to see like a little gap here, you see like a little gap here, but again, to an audience, you're not going to be able to notice that at all. But it does give you the perfect reason. Watch it not work now. It didn't work, but I think it went straight to here. Yeah, it did. Sometimes you have that, sometimes you don't. Um, sometimes it's going to be the bottom one. It'll just make a bit of a breather, a breather in the middle. Um, and you don't actually have to look at the gaps in between. You can just genuinely feel feel it. You can feel it, pick it up, and, and it will be there. But if you've seen the 60th anniversary video, you'll see that David Tennant's character, the 14th Doctor, does not actually touch the cards until he lifts it up. But that's not very fair, is it? And the whole point of this game is it being fair. You'll see Neil Patrick Harris doing, you know, some funky little shuffles throughout the whole thing, which I'm very pleased that they included in the, uh, the episode show off his talents and stuff. Um, but to make it fair, you'd have to get the other person to shuffle the cards as well, right? So in that moment, you could always load a pre-gimmicked, pre pre-crimped cards, or um, you could just 
make a little nick at the uh, at the side and put it in the card there um, when you're shuffling up the cards, if you can do some funky shuffles, which I'm sure the 14th Doctor could possibly do after all his many years of being alive. And if you are a magician, I'm sure you can figure out ways to do it as well. But all in all, it is simply just a crimp like that. Now, in realistic terms, you're not going to be facing this Celestial Toymaker anytime soon. So you could use this in gambling demonstrations or um, reveals. You know, if someone's picked a... If you, you could force the Ace of Spades, for instance. Um, you know, if you do the classic cross-cut force. Um, you know, you know, get the participant to cut the cards wherever you want and then you talk, tell them, cool, I'm going to... I'm going to find the card um, wherever you go. You know, you're going to pick a random card. It is the Ace of Spades call. Cool. Um, take the cards, shuffle them in the middle of the deck. They shuffle up the cards. Simple as that. And then all you have to do is find the crimp like that. Sorted like that. And, and you can, you know, maneuver it in any way, cut to it however you like. That's a real simple way of doing it. But it takes you to the card that you want to the most. And that is how you could be the Celestial Joy Maker or just impress your mates. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, my last episode of Is Magic Real? A series where I answer the question, Is Magic Real? is coming out this Sunday. So if you haven't already, go check out the whole series because I will be answering the question in this week's episode. Make sure you check me out on Instagram and TikTok and you, uh, you know, Subscribe to the channel if you can handle my nerdy magicness, I suppose. But that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.